Despite Louis Vuitton being the most valuable luxury fashion brand in the world and having a CEO named Bernard Arnold who is the richest man on the planet with a net worth of $215 billion, you would never have guessed that the company was started by a homeless boy who had no education and slept in a forest. Louis Vuitton is a true rags to riches story but the company is also a subject of a hostile takeover, countless lawsuits and a host of other controversies. This is the mind-blowing story of Louis Vuitton and how a tiny family business evolved into one of the most powerful brands in the world. Louis Vuitton was born in 1821 and he grew up working on his family's farm in France in a small village called Anke in the middle of nowhere. In Anke, they had no electricity and no running water. Louis' father Xavier was a farmer and his mother Corinne sells hats to help make some extra cash for the family. There are no records showing that Louis ever received an education because the nearest school was 6 miles away from the village and it's believed that he worked full time on the family farm without ever learning how to read or write. Louis worked in the field every day from dusk till dawn just to make enough food to help feed his family. Needless to say, the Viltons were struggling financially and young Viltin was born in a situation that should have doomed him from ever having a bright future. And then things got much worse when Louis' mother died. He was just 10 years old when this happened. After the death of Louis' mother, Louis' father immediately remarried another woman. But Louis' new stepmother was incredibly controlling and manipulative towards him and so he got into fights constantly with her and because of that he ran away from home when he was just 13 years old. He had plans of going to Paris so he slipped out in the middle of the night without even saying goodbye to anyone. But there was just one problem, Paris was 225 miles away and young Louis had no money for either transportation nor food. So he was forced to walk along dairy roads, most nights he slept in the woods with an empty stomach and just a cloak to keep him warm. Every time he ran into a new village, he would do odd jobs in exchange for food or coins. However, there was never enough money left over for housing, so he continued sleeping in the woods or wherever he could find shelter for the night. Through these various odd jobs, Louis was able to pick up skills from craftsmen and he learned how to work with metal, stone, fabric and wood. This collection of various odd skills would later transform his life but at his current rate, travel to Paris was incredibly slow, it took him 3 years to reach Paris. Not long after he arrived in Paris, Louis was able to find a work as an apprentice bus maker and packer. And in case you're wondering, bus makers are people who make custom sized boxes for clients as well as packing and unpacking them whenever the client was about to go on a trip. Now back to the story, this job made him meet new people from the upper class who were looking for custom made luggage for their travels. Louis worked there for years learning the craft and working as hard as he could. In fact, in 1851, the Empress of France ended up being a customer and she took notice of his fine craftsmanship. Then she appointed him as a personal bus maker and packer. For most bus makers, this would have been the highest honor to achieve but Louis Vuitton had bigger vision for his life. After getting married when he was just 33 years old, Louis used the savings to start up his own business and then he opened his own bus making workshop in Paris to begin selling his own products. Louis noticed a major flaw in the luggage he sells. All the boxes were made with leather and they had round dome shaped tops so that rain would roll off the top of the luggage. The major issue was that it was impossible to stack them. The packers had to carry the boxes one by one. Louis began experimenting with different materials to use instead of the round dope shaped leather. So he found out that canvas was lighter, durable and it was water resistant which meant the trunks could have flat tops instead of round tops. This made everything more efficient as it was now possible to stack them up in a pile multiple times at one time instead of one by one. 
Louis Nude suitcase design brought on the dawn of the modern day luggage. At this time, Louis had already built up his professional reputation as well as his connection in the upper class. So of course once he launched his new line of luggage, it was immediately a huge success. Within two years of creating his new suitcases, it were now considered elegant and a must-have accessory amongst the wealthy. The brand has become so popular that he was now receiving orders from royals around the world. He even began receiving orders from royals as far as Egypt. In 1859, Louis made enough profit to hire a team of craftsmen to help fulfill his orders. He opened a new workshop in Paris where he hired 20 employees. Around that time, more and more people were beginning to travel by train and boats. So the number of his potential customers increased rapidly. Traveling was no longer a hobby exclusive to the rich, but also people from low backgrounds were now in need of high quality luggage. It would seem as though Louis had made it and would go on to succeed for the rest of his life, but unfortunately that was not the case. France was heading to a war and tragedy was about to strike again for Louis Vuitton. In 1870, when Louis was 49 years old, the Franco Prussian War broke out. So Louis had to flee his home and live in a cramped shelter with thousands of others. Food supplies were extremely low, so he thought he would not survive. When Louis could finally return to his shop in 1871, everything was destroyed, equipment were stolen, and he had lost everything he worked so hard for. But instead of giving up, he decided to rebuild his business and vowed that it would even be better than it was before. With so many people displaced from the war, there were far more empty shops available for rent throughout the city. So Louis Vuitton took advantage of this by opening his new shop in a much more wealthy location in Paris. It was perfect because it was right next to the railway station and the Grand Hotel. So travelers who needed new luggage didn't need to go far to find the Louis Vuitton store. Many other brands tried to copy his style but his bags were ridiculously high quality that customers still prefer an original Louis Vuitton bag. For the next 20 years, Louis continued to work at his new shop in Paris until his death when he was 70 years old. But his legacy was able to live on through his son, Georges, who took over the family business. Georges sought out ways to expand the brand globally, such as opening a new popular store in London. At this point, Louis Vuitton luggage was so popular that many other bus makers were beginning to make counterfeits. So, in 1896, Georges Vuitton brought out the now iconic LV monogram to make it harder to copy. By the year 1900, the company had 100 employees and it continued to grow year after year. All the employees were trained for a very long time in order to become experts bus makers. Even to this day, Louis Vuitton employees trained 18 months to 2 years before they are trusted to make one product on their own. Georges Vuitton died in 1936 and the company was passed over to his son, Gaston Louis. However, Gaston took over the company at a very difficult time because in just few years, France was heading again to another war. During World War II, contracts were cancelled and Gaston was forced to shut down the Louis Vuitton factory. Paris was once again under surge. The only way for Gaston Louis to save his company was to collaborate with Nazi Germany. Other brands were forced to shut down due to incorporation with the Nazis. Clearly, the company was ashamed of this part of their history, but people argued that Gaston did what he needed to do for the company to survive. When Gaston passed away in 1970, his son-in-law, Henry Rakemia, took over the Louis Vuitton brand. Unlike his ancestors, Henry had a lot of business experience from a company he had run before. So when he took over Louis Vuitton, he was able to elevate the brand to a whole new level. Henry began to make major chances to the Louis Vuitton brand in order to grow it from a family-owned company to the massive corporation that it is today. He switched to Louis Vuitton business model from wholesale to retail. By 1978, 
he expanded into many other countries including Japan and this took him only 6 years. Due to modern inflation, sales went from 20 million dollars to 260 million dollars. And so, in 1984, Louis Vuitton sold out the 1 million shares valued at 63 dollars each. Henry took the momentum and influx of cash and began opening many stores across the globe. By 1987, Louis Vuitton reached $1 billion in sales. It was far beyond what Louis could have ever dreamt of when he opened the store in Paris. Henry decided to make the company combine with Mount Hennessy, a luxury drink company which produced champagne and cognac. And together, they formed a the new luxury conglomerate called LVMH. Unfortunately, Henry didn't end up getting along with the president of Moet Hennessy. So Henry asked a successful property developer he knew named Bernard Arnold to help him manage the situation. Unfortunately, inviting him over as an investor turned out to be an epitome of betrayal. Bernard secretly bought 43% of the shares of Louis Vuitton and he got support from the Moet and Hennessy families to gain more power in LVMH. Henry felt he had been betrayed by the man he brought in to help him and so he took Bernard to court, demanding that he should no longer have the majority stake in Louis Vuitton. But sadly, the court ultimately sided with Bernard. Henry was so angry about being backstabbed by his friend that he decided to quit working for Louis Vuitton. Now, for the first time in 100 years, no one from the Vuitton family was a part of the brand. And that completes the story of Louis Vuitton. Please subscribe because I have lots of amazing stories that you want to hear. I'm telling you, you want to hear the stories. And yeah, thank you for watching me. I have, yeah, bye. I love you. Bye. I love you. Bye.